Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. It is the last day of winter, my friends, and the impression I've been getting is that most of you are glad to be relegating this cold and heartless season to the dustbin of history, along with this weekend's St. Patrick's Day hangover, of course. And so we now look forward to the freshness and renewal that spring 2023 will undoubtedly bring us. Fresh shoots break free from the earth to greet the sun, new life bursts forth in a flowering bouquet of scents and colors, and we feel a spreading warmth once again, like we all just peed our pants. And what better way to ease into the new season than a nice, comfortably average week of tech news? PC hardware stuff did indeed happen this week. Some GPU stuff and some other GPU stuff too, not to put too fine a point on it. So let's shake off that winter chill and slowly make our way outside again after this episode of Tech News. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair Xenion Flex OLED Gaming Monitor, which can bend from completely flat up to 800R curvature. But there's a lot more to this display, which features an ultra-wide 45-inch 3440x1440 panel with a 240Hz refresh rate and 0.03 millisecond gray-to-gray response time. The spec list also includes NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, AMD FreeSync Premium certification, Auto HDR with up to 1000 nit brightness, 99% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, a sophisticated burn-in prevention system, and an integrated stand with a range of connectivity. Click the sponsor link in the video description for more on the Corsair Xenion Flex. We begin this week with a rumor, because like I said, it's an average week for tech news, but this one is about GPUs that I know at least a few people are anticipating. NVIDIA's RTX 40 series has been fairly pointless for anyone on a budget, but possibly maybe there will be a lower end card in the stack that will offer a reasonable price to performance balance for gamers looking to upgrade. Okay, probably not, let's be honest, but either way, this could be our first look at the RTX 4060, and it also appears to be a Founders Edition model, which NVIDIA skipped for the RTX 4070 Ti. These watermarked images were shared by Twitter leaker Kitty Yuko, and they show a card that's pretty clearly labeled the RTX 4060, although Kitty speculates that maybe it's a 4060 Ti for some reason. Or perhaps both cards will share the same two-slot cooler design, notably smaller than the higher-end 40 series cards that have launched, rumored specs for the RTX 4060 Ti and 4060 are shown on this chart that videocards.com put together, with both GPUs sporting 8GB of GDDR6 memory on a meager 128-bit bus. But the 4060 Ti does go with the larger AD106 GPU die for more CUDA cores and also a higher TDP. Now, to be clear, there is no confirmation from NVIDIA that there will be Founders Edition models for the 4060 and 4060 Ti, or even that those cards are in the works, although it's fairly safe to assume based on prior launches. But these images could also be of engineering sample cards that will never make it to retail, as demonstrated by these other images Kitty Yuko leaked on Thursday morning. This is apparently an RTX 4070 Ti Founders Edition PCB, with the AD104 GPU, which could also have been a cancelled RTX RTX 4080 12 gig. It looks like Nvidia did design these cards, but they were never launched. So remember, even if a leaked image is legitimate, it still might be of a product that never makes it to market. Speaking of a launch failure, the tale of the 12VH power connector for graphics cards that debuted alongside the RTX 4090 last year was a bit of a saga as it was disclosed to cause connector overheating and melting when not plugged in all the way. Well, there's another chapter to add now, as Intel has now officially updated the ATX 3.0 spec to ATX 3.01, which includes new guidance specifically for power supply manufacturers who want to include a 12VH power plug. And that guidance is, if we just scroll down for a little bit here, those manufacturers should go with four spring internal connectors, not the three dimple variety, for a more durable design, stronger connection, and to ensure a better electrical connection. So on the one hand, going forward, PSUs that use the four spring pin connectors should reduce failures due to bad electrical connections between the pins. That's well and good. On the other hand though, this is a recommendation, not a requirement, so I have no doubt that cut rate PSU makers will still use the three dimple pins if they're cheaper to source. And that's not likely to be something that's indicated on the spec sheet for a power supply so you can opt for one or the other. This also introduces some doubt for consumers who are already set up with a card that uses a 12VH power connector 
but fortunately the guidance is to not worry about it too much, as long as you're making sure that the connector is properly seated, as was recommended after all the hubbub about this a few months back, you should be fine and there's no need to change out your PSU or the cable. And hopefully this is the last chapter in this saga and we can close the book on 12VH power drama. High-end GPUs are still difficult to find at reasonable prices, but there will be yet another CPU that's purpose-built to pair with a high-end GPU on the market soon. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D, the one that all of us reviewers said you should wait for if you were thinking about the 7950X3D that launched a few weeks ago. The 7800X3D already has a confirmed launch date of April 6th, and simulated 7800X3D performance tests, like these posted by Tech Power Up, have already been run by disabling the second CPU. CD in a 7950X3D, revealing that it does indeed perform just as well as the flagship, sometimes even better, while also generally outpacing the 13900K. Even the price has already been disclosed by AMD, it's 450 US dollars, which they told us at CES, so what does it matter that a Slovenian retailer has posted an early listing of the 7800X3D for 530 euros? Well, regional pricing may vary a bit from place to place, but I'd like to remind everyone that retail website listings are usually just put together by a product manager who works for that website and can easily contain erroneous information or just be a placeholder that they set up until specific prices or other details are confirmed. Besides, it's not really the CPU prices that are a problem right now, it's the GPUs. If anything is muting people's enthusiasm for recent CPU launches, it is absolutely the high GPU prices and possibly also a general lack of money for basic necessities in the world. Speaking of basic necessities, it's time to add a fundamental ingredient to today's show, tech briefs, where you get just the right amount of information without all those annoying extra words. Max Sun, a GPU board partner from China, has added something extra to their new RTX 4080 and 4070 Ti mega gamer models, extra fans, because 2020 called and they want their three fan GPU coolers back. An actually good GPU these days should have five fans at minimum, with two extras added on the sides, directing airflow over those sensitive extremities of the cooler's fin stack, which are so often neglected. I want to comment on whether this is a brilliant idea or just the latest GPU gimmick, but I think I'm just too distracted by seeing the word Gaga in this card's name. Gaga. Me Gaga Gamer. Me Gaga. Me Gaga Gamer. Me Gaga. Also a side note, maybe they should change their name from Max Sun to Max Fan. Speaking of GPUs, Intel makes those too now, and I think they deserve some credit for persistently improving their drivers in the first few months of 2023. Hot on the heels of a big update just two weeks ago, which improved performance across a range of titles and further established the A750 and A770 as viable budget solutions, we have another update that went up on Friday, with Game On support for the Diablo 4 beta and Deceive Incorporated, as well as performance optimizations for Sons of the Forest. Intel says that the A750 far outpaces the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte at rendering Deceive Incorporated. And while these are Intel's results, so they should be taken with a grain of salt, and this is a much smaller update than the last one, I'm glad Intel is pushing their software team to keep the updates coming. The Steam Deck marked its one year launch anniversary recently, Happy birthday, Steam Deck. And to celebrate, Valve has offered a discount on the handheld gaming device for the first time ever, 10% off. A decent $40 to $65 savings here in the US, although the sale is worldwide. This coincidentally coincides with the Steam Spring Sale, which I believe will happen sometime after the start of spring. Actually, scratch that. It already started on Thursday in winter, but it runs for one week until March 23rd. So grab some video game deals and a Steam Deck while you're at it, unless you want to hold out for the rumored OLED version of the deck, which is still a rumor despite a Valve rep discussing some OLED details recently. Short answer, they'd like to make an OLED screen. It's a lot of work. If there's a next-gen Steam Deck, it will probably be OLED, but there's no indication that there will be an incremental update of the current Steam Deck with an OLED screen anytime soon. Here's a random but pretty cool piece of PC hardware for you, the Apex Storage X21, a PCIe 4.0 add-in card that can fit up to 21 M.2 SSDs. It does this with a dual PCB design that can mount 10 SSDs on the inside, as well as an unspecified controller that probably also acts as a switch, and then 11 more SSDs on the outside. You can see mount 
counting points for six of them on this card here. And that definitely maximizes your space for sure, but good luck if any of your SSDs requires a heatsink. With eight terabyte SSDs though, this card could hold 168 terabytes of storage and in an ideal configuration can hit 30 plus gigabytes per second read speeds and six to 7.5 million IOPS. A fascinating device for storage junkies, but unfortunately Apex storage hasn't revealed pricing or availability yet. Lastly, we have an update from one of the many microchip fabs being built out here in the US, this time from Samsung. Their Taylor, Texas plant that's under construction will actually cost over $25 billion, up more than $8 billion from their initial forecasts. Blame inflation primarily, just as we do for most of our financial woes these days, which accounts for about 80% of Samsung's revised build-out bill. If construction is delayed, it could push their costs up even higher, but Samsung remains committed to the project, which should create 2,000 high-tech jobs in the area. They would love to finish the build in 2024 so they can ramp up production in 2025, which would beat the 2026 deadline that they need to hit to get those sweet, sweet tax credits from the CHIPS Act. But there you have it, guys. That is the sweet, sweet tech news for this week. And if you liked it, click that like button, or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you're interested. You can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we'll see you next week.